Hi, welcome to Digital Yachts How To video series. In today's video, we're going to be looking at how you actually navigate using the Smart Attract 2014 navigation software. So let's open Smart Attract. So this assumes that you've done all your planning, you've got your route sorted out. Uh, let's just clear that. Um, and now uh, you want to set off and start navigating. So Unfortunately, for the uh, for the purposes of this video, I'm not actually on a boat. I'm actually in my home office on top of Portsdown Hill, um, so that's why the boat's shown as as being there. Um, but what I'll do is I'll try um, to show you how the navigation works from the comfort of my <laughs> armchair. So let's uh, show you how um, to display a route that I created earlier. So let's go to the route and then library. So I've got one there called Portsmouth to Hillhead and that's the one that I'm going to show on the chart. Uh, okay so you can see my simple route in blue there. Let's just zoom in a little bit. Um, you've got uh, name of the route at the beginning uh, and that is uh, route, route 1 uh, or route waypoint 1, 2, 3, 4 and then they carry on around the corner uh, off up to Hillhead. Um, each leg you'll see has got uh, distance and bearing shown there and on the assumption that in most cases you'll be wanting to navigate to the first um, waypoint in a route um, what you can do is you can just click on that one and it brings up the the route uh, information box uh, here we go Portsmouth to Hillhead that's route point one that I've just clicked on and uh, allows me to activate that route. So as soon as I activate that route, the route goes to red um, and you'll see over here it's telling me that the current waypoint is number one. Uh, the bearing to that waypoint from where the boat is now on top of ports down here is 165 degrees. Uh, it's a distance of 2.89 nautical miles and because we've not gone off tr course yet, uh, cross track error is equal to zero. Um, Estimated at a current speed, it's going to take us 57 minutes to get there. It probably would take a lot more because we're not actually moving. Um, it's flashing the, the first waypoint to show us that that's the waypoint uh, that we want to head for. Um, and it's estimating our uh, end, of, we'll reach the end of the route in 3 hours and 51 minutes. Now, obviously, we had a proper, if we were actually navigating now and we had speed over the ground, it would be able to calculate that time to go quite accurately. Um, in fact, there you go. It's realised that we're actually not moving very far, and it's uh, it's changed the uh, changed the estimated time of arrival. So that is basically um, it now. If we wanted to, for instance, say we were uh, tacking towards that waypoint, although maybe not such a good idea in Portsmouth Harbour, um, and we didn't, we weren't actually going to to hit that waypoint, so to speak, um, we were going to go off to one side of it, then you can actually get it to advance to the next waypoint, um, to waypoint 2, um, and uh, you'll notice down in the box here it's got current waypoint, it's now waypoint 2 and I can advance to waypoint 3, so you, you've got control over uh, advancing to that, otherwise um, it will also uh, automatically advance so if we if we get close to or past waypoint one um, it will automatically go on to waypoint two so you tend to use this um, advanced next waypoint if for instance you want to um, uh, if you stop for lunch halfway through the route uh, what you do is deactivate the route while you're having your lunch and then when you come back after lunch say we want to now to go to waypoint three you select waypoint three activate route and it will now miss out waypoint one and two and go straight to waypoint three so that's that's how you can control that uh, which waypoint is is the next waypoint that it's aiming for so that's that um, so you know we've already covered how to create routes and waypoints the one thing we didn't cover in that was let me just deactivate this route now deactivate route um, now some customers we know from uh, talking to them um, actually to go one step even simpler and actually just use the go to function just to say right I want to go to this place one one waypoint um, and then when they get to that waypoint they'll just put in the next go to um, 
and so what you can do there is you click the go to button and then you just put that there it just creates one waypoint it automatically knows that you want to go straight to that waypoint and it gives you the information again here in the in the root box and if I want to deactivate that I just select it and deactivate root and then I can also delete that root as well because it was just a temporary go to okay so that's that's that so so let's say that we've we've uh, navigated quite successfully all the way to hillhead <coughs> and now we want to go back so we can select that route um, and in fact not from this screen what we'll do first is we'll go up here and we'll reverse that route and reverse that route so now what was waypoint 12 has become waypoint 1 2 and it's and it's actually reversed that route and now we can just again click on waypoint 1 activate route and now it will start to to navigate to that route and it gives you the the data here again so very straightforward but very powerful as well um, and you've got a lot of uh, capability there so if you suddenly um, uh, if you suddenly had to make a detour for instance you can add a route um, point after the current uh, waypoint and what that's done is it's put in a an extra waypoint there um, and then I can right click on that and I can move route point and I can put that out here so if we wanted to for instance take a wide berth around something we can quickly uh, without actually stopping navigating on that route we can actually make a, a, a change to that route as necessary okay so that's pretty much um, all there is to the navigation side of, uh, of smart track um, and I think that covers all of the the main features okay Thanks very much for watching, I hope you found that useful.